I have an installation that I've created here, and I'm trying to mimic the functions of my beverage plant, right? So I've got um, cleaning, filling and capping, labeling and packing zones represented here. In my cleaning zone, I have this single terminal, like I showed you previously, and it has visualization software landed here. It is not owned by the terminal. As I said, that paradigm has changed. The terminal does not own the visualization. The visualization is about the cleaning zone. It just happens to be landed on the terminal currently. I'm going to give you a use case to help you understand how to use relevance in your facility. So here's my use case. So Oliver the operator is out on the plant floor, right? And Oliver is monitoring this process and notices that some of the bottles that are supposed to be clean are actually coming off the line area here and they're not clean. And what Oliver knows, having worked there for five years, Oliver knows that usually when that happens, that means one of the jets that puts either the distilled water, purified water, or the detergent into the bottle for the cleaning process, one of the jets is probably not working properly, which probably means one of the valves on the jets not working properly. So Oliver, who can't really fix this, calls Manny and says, hey, Manny, I got a problem, so the bottles aren't coming out clean. And Manny knows, well, it's probably one of the valves. But the problem is there's maybe 24 or 48 valves in this linear process. Maybe it's radial. It doesn't matter. And while the process is running, you really can't tell which one's not working properly. You have to actually do a process called manual control visual inspect, right? So Manny's going to come out to the line in the cleaning zone area. And while, when he does this, actually the first thing that's going to happen is Oliver is going to go in and disable the process, right? Pull the e-stop. I just put a little button on the screen here and just disable the process. And then Oliver is probably going to go to the break room because Oliver can't fix it. Kind of has an idea what's wrong, but knows Manny's supposed to fix it. So Manny comes out and Manny looks at it and says, well, I know it's probably um, one of the valves isn't working, so I'm going to go into the manual control screen because I've got to manually control and visually inspect, and that gives me the ability to press a button, and when I press that button, that'll uh, spray the valve, and I can see if it's actually spraying properly, so I can see if the jet's spraying properly. So the problem is, is this terminal is on the left-hand side of the process, and actually it's 30 feet away to visually inspect those jets. So you can't control and see at the same time. So what's Manny do? Manny calls Mitch, the maintenance person, out to the floor and says, okay, Mitch, you stand here, press the button, and I'll go visually inspect. Right? So, you know, Manny's over here and says, okay, press button one, jet one worked. Press button two, jet two worked. So you got two people from the maintenance area out on the plant floor to fix a valve. Well, wouldn't it be better if Manny could, in the maintenance area, just grab an iPad, right, and just simply run the ITMC application, connect to the thin server, it'll do that automatically if there's a single thin server, log in as Manny, put in his password. Now remember, there's content assigned to the maintenance people. That's personal content, that's the work order system, so it delivers the work order system, and only the work order system. Then take this device on the plant floor, up to the terminal that has the manual control screen on it, scan a QR code that delivers the content to the iPad. Now I can walk down the line as Manny without Mitch. Manually control, visually inspect, manually control, visually inspect. I'll get to number six. Hey, it's not working. That's the one that's bad. I'll go to the work order system, enter the required part, when I'm done, and I'm going to pull this over here so you can see the manual control, I leave. That'll make the manual control screen go back over here to Oliver's terminal, and I log off. That'll make this particular iPad usable by any other maintenance person when I take it back to the maintenance area. So I've transferred content so that I could do my job without Mitch. And all I had to do was scan the QR code. So now let's say Oliver grabs an iPad. He logs in as Oliver with a password of Z, right? He goes up to that same cleaning QR code and scans it. Oliver's 
action is different. Oliver's action gives him a shadow of that content, right? So he's on the manual control screen. He goes back to the main clean screen. He re-enables the process. He's walked down the line to make sure everything's okay. When he's done, he leaves, disconnects the shadow. He puts the device down. Let's say he wanted to go out to packing and there was no visualization in the packing zone. Right? And he just wanted a little bit of visualization. He could log in, Oliver, put his password, scan the packing code that's on the packing machine, and it could deliver him the visualization. Wow, look at that. I can see my process. I could set it on the ledge in the packing area. When I'm done, I simply leave and log off. That was a clone. So it cloned the content, which is the packing HMI for the packing zone. So what's happening here is I'm resolving to these QR codes and it's delivering me content, whether it be a shadow or a clone or a transfer. What if uh, Manny heard that there was a problem with the motor, right? There's a fault on the motor. He went out to packing and he said, well, I need the content, the reference material assigned to this motor so I'm going to log myself in as Manny, and again, he'll get the work order system by default. There it is. And then I'll scan this ID that's right there on the motor, and it'll deliver me the pack drive manual, the schematic for the motor, the visualization for the packing area, and the work order system. So I'm getting all the content I need to fix the problem. So if I were fixing the problem, I'd probably disable packing. I'd probably look at the schematic, read the manual, fix the problem, right? And then he's getting ready to leave, right? So he says, I'm, I, I'm done, I got it fixed. He says, oh, you know what? I had to re-enable packing. I had to clear the faults or whatever I was gonna do to re-enable it so that the user, the operator could then use. Well, um, Tell you what, I'll just do it here. It's still up on my device. So I'll just enable packing. With the ActiveX control, we've put in a gate that says, no, 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 no. You have to scan the code on the machine to re-enable it. You have to be at the location that you're trying to enable. Good example of you know, where you can use the ActiveX control to provide a safety measure. And you may say, well, well why, why couldn't I just take a picture of that and take it to the maintenance area? Well, that's when you'd use fencing. So if you fall outside the fencing area, then you can't do it. All right, so next we're gonna talk about Bluetooth device. I have a Bluetooth device here in my pocket. I'm gonna set it on the table and this will be my resolver for the cleaning zone. Now, previously I assigned it to the content, the content to the cleaning zone and I put the resolver as the Bluetooth device. Currently, it's not resolving for my user because I have no user logged in, and I haven't turned on Bluetooth yet. When I set up this resolver, what I said is if you walk within range of this Bluetooth device and you're an operator, then it's going to clone off the visualization and deliver it to your iPad. So let's see that in action. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as Oliver, put my password in, now I'm logged in as Oliver, okay? Now it's not resolving because I haven't turned on Bluetooth on my iPad, so I'm gonna turn on Bluetooth. Boom, Bluetooth is on. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna start taking readings, recognize that it's within range of that Bluetooth device. And when it's within range of the Bluetooth device, it's gonna deliver the HMI. Now, um, it's going to be hard for me to walk out of range because I'll be walking out of the camera. So I'm going to hand the Bluetooth device off to one of my associates and he's going to walk out of range as if I were walking out of range. The Bluetooth device is going to go out of range. And once he's outside of range, my HMI act uh, application will go away. Then when he comes back in range, the application will see it again and re-deliver me my HMI. Now it takes about nine seconds because my setting is right now three scans at three seconds apiece. So after nine seconds it'll del deliver the cleaning HMI. Okay? So that's the ability to use Bluetooth. I want to show you a couple of uh, ways to set these up, how this can be set up 
because I want you to understand how easy it is through relevance to create these IDs, these different uh, resolvers, and to apply the resolvers to the locations and deliver content. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off Bluetooth, which will make the application go away. I'm going to log off my user. And first thing I'm going to do is show you how to register content. And to do that, I'm actually going to go into my application and I'm going to delete the assignments. So here we go. Here's my Thin Manager application. And I, I, a couple of things here. Let's show you first the locations. So we created this location hierarchy. I got the cleaning zone, filling zone, labeling zone, packing zone. In packing, I have the pack conveyor motor. That's another location. In labeling, I have the Control Logics PLC. For the Control Logics PLC, I have content, which would be the PL PLC program, programming software, excuse me. In the cleaning zone, I have the cleaning HMI. In the packing zone, I have the packing HMI. And in the pack conveyor motor location, I have the pack drive manual and the pack motor schematic. So there's all my content and assignment. So I'm going to go into the cleaning zone here. I'm going to show you how I signed the resolvers. This is my resolver area, and I've got four resolving, uh, four resolves, three for the cleaning zone. Well, how can I have three different actions for the cleaning zone? Well, that's because different groups of users get different actions assigned. For instance, Oliver, I showed you before, does a shadow while Manny does a force transfer. And there's actually a third on here, the supervisor group does a clone. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to delete each one of these. So I'm going to unassign the action from this location, the resolving action, and I'm going to delete the Bluetooth, which does a cleaning, uh, which does a um, clone for the users in the operator group. Then I'm going to hit finish. Then I'm going to go to my main screen here, go under manage, manage resolvers, and I'm going to delete the actual registration of the resolver because we're going to re-register them. There's Bluetooth and there's the QR code. All right, so I've deleted the registered resolvers, both the Bluetooth resolver and the QR code resolver. So I'm going to have to recreate them, and then I'm going to apply them to the locations and create actions with them. OK, so here's how we do that. So I'm going to pull up, as I did before, the view of my iPad. So you can see that. That's my iPad. And I'm going to go to the main menu under ITMC. The application that you download from the App Store is called ITMC. I'm going to go into the main menu under Settings. And I'm going to register a QR code. All I've got to do is scan the QR code. It'll ask me for a name. I'll call it Cleaning Zone. And I'll hit Register. OK, so that registered that QR code. And I gave it a placeholder name called Cleaning Zone. Now I'm going to go into the Thin Manager application. And I'm going to go under the location called Cleaning Zone. And I'm going to add the cleaning zone resolver. And I'm going to do a force transfer if I'm a member of maintenance. So that's one resolve. I'm going to do a clone if I'm a member of supervisor. And I'm going to do a shadow if I'm an operator, like Oliver. OK? So now, if I go back in and I log in as Oliver, password of Z, and I scan the code, it'll do a shadow. That's all it took. I'll leave. I'll log off. Now I'm going to add the Bluetooth. So to do the Bluetooth registration, I'm going to have to turn on my Bluetooth. OK, Bluetooth is on. And then I'm going to go back to the main menu. Under Settings, I'm going to say Register Bluetooth Beacon. It's going to use the filter. We wrote the code for the Bluetooth Beacon, so it has a filter called ACP-Dash in it. And I'm using the filter to show me only those Bluetooth items. 
I'm going to stand at the entrance point. I'll set that about 10 feet away and continue. It's going to take some readings of the Bluetooth signal. And when it gets its final reading, it will tell me it's complete and it will have been registered and it'll, give, it'll ask me to give it a name. So I'll call it BTB for Bluetooth Beacon. And it registered it. Now I'm going to go back into Thin Manager. And I'm going to go to Cleaning Zone. And I'm going to apply the Bluetooth Beacon and I want it to clone only for people in the operator group. Okay, so now if I go to my terminal, there's my operator terminal, and if I pull up my iPad, go back to main, connect to the primary server, log in Oliver, password of Z, I am pretty much within range and it delivers me the HMI. All right, so that's my demonstration, live demonstration of Relevance 1.0.